Today on Furniture on the Mend. The chairs, Gettys, I'm caning the chairs! Caning, hmm. part one. One of my favorite jobs, and I hope the last time I will ever have to do this. How many people use this to uh, stand on? This is not a ladder. This is Don't do that. This <laughs> Knuckleheads. Oh, you're riling them up, people. I'm not going to tell you again. Don't get them riled. When people use this for a ladder, and even when they don't, when they just sit on something like this, after a while, it starts to sag, then you get a little break, then a big break, and then finally... You have a strainer. <laughs> Look. Now, this is not woven cane in the old sense. This cane comes on a roll. Looks like this. See? Looks just like this. And, and you cut the piece that you want, you wet it, and then it's pounded into this channel. And we're going to show you just how to do it. But first, you and the most... You gotta take off the old cane. It's the most It's just like an upholstery or in refinishing. The hardest part is getting the old crap off. And here are some of the tools you will need. Something to hit and something to pry. I'm using my claw. What are you using? I'm using a chisel and I have an awl and I need a hammer. Do you yeah. have one? I have one of these. No, I'll have this rubber mallet instead. Okay, so what we have is this woven cane fitted into a channel, and on top of the channel, we have another piece, another piece of reed that is actually obscuring where it's, where this piece of woven cane is glued. Yeah. Where do you get this stuff? You gotta look in the yellow pages, under cane. Well, you don't look under cane. Sure you do. Under cane? Caning supplies. Okay, but that would be under what? Furniture? You would no, have it would be under caning supplies. Really? Honest to God. You show me later, okay. Anyway. All right, begin carefully now. The trick is, First of all, before you start, oh, you got to wet it. Wet we around wet. here. We did wet it already. So take a little bit of cloth, some hot water, and go around the edges, and that'll supplify it. Supple. Make it make it supple. Uh huh. Just let it sit on there for a while, and what'll happen is it'll soak through the cane because the cane is porous, and it will soften it up. Now you have to be careful with this because you'll damage the chair. Now, if you don't, let's see. If, come on. Just like anything else. Work it slowly and carefully. See how that bead's coming up? You know, doing this, you know what this reminds me it of? It reminds me of, yeah. What does it remind me of? My favorite movie, Citizen Kane. Hmm. I remember that scene. Don't worry about me, Gettys. I can cane the chairs myself. Do you hear? Do you hear me, Gettys? I'm caning the chairs. The chairs, Gettys, I'm caning the chairs. It's a good film. Great movie. See the angle I got the all stuck in here? It's right underneath the reed. And I'm just banging and I'm lifting. And this one is just pulling out very easily. It must have been really loose. Let's see how it's coming up here. And then you'll have to go back down with something at an angle. This claw works fine. And dig out the rest and you can actually I guess this this makes our entire segment meaningless you can actually take this whole wooden frame with the cane out and buy a new one for probably the same money as you would pay a person to recane yeah but if chair. you do it yourself which is what we're teaching then you'll save yourself some money and you'll learn something new and then you can do it for your family and your friends and nobody will leave you alone <laughs> Everybody will want you to do it, and then you'll go into business, and then you'll go bankrupt. Pretty much sold them on the idea of but doing it themselves. This is important right here in this corner. See, now I got this one edge out. Now I got to go this way, 
but I don't want to shoot like this because no. if I bang under there and pull down, I'm going to bend this. I'm going to make a big ding in there. So I got to keep banging like here and hope that I can lift that up and it comes up. Right, I'll take a chisel in here. There, see? Now I can get the chisel underneath, like all underneath and continue to bang, bang. And I forgot how much I like doing this. You hate doing this. I was acting there. Was that acting? Was that This program is brought to you in part by Skill Power Tools. Think of all the things you can do. Skill Power Tools make such quick work of all your projects. You'll find time to get out there and work on all kinds of things. Skill Power Tools. Think of all the things you can do. In places where people need an air conditioner that lasts a long, long, long time, they know... Okay, kid, run up and see if anybody's home. It's hard to stop a train. Too much iron in your water? Better call Rainsoft. Witness the accounts. The light was coming at me. It was extremely bright. Listen to the testimony. It was hovering up here, uh, just below the tops of the trees. As TLC blasts off in search of unidentified flying objects. It's kind of tough, really, to say just what the heck that could be. Do they exist? It's uh, really getting a bit frightening up here. That they hope they're friendly. Case of the UFOs on Science Frontiers, Wednesday at 10 on TLC. The channels are all clean. Now it's time to apply, oh, Kane and Reed. Why do you talk like that all the time? Now apply. it's time to apply. Well, I'm trying to appeal to all demographics. OK. All right, now we're going to get busy with Now all it's time to get to work, all right? This is real sharp talk here. I just spit just came out of my mouth. Now OK. We've, we've uh, cut a generous amount of cane that we've had soaking overnight. It's sitting right here. You can see it's nice and uh, wet. Nice and wet. And underneath, we got the reed. What's this? It's wood. It's a thin piece of wood, pine, that we are going to cut up into wedges. Into little wedges like this. Into little wedges so we can, when we apply the cane to the channel, we can bang the cane down into the channel. This is smaller than the, uh, the, than the channel. Well, if it was bigger than the channel, how would it fit then in the channel? Then it wouldn't fit in. Once you get it broken, you sand I tricked them. to smooth it. The, the, the wide edges and the ends, so that they're rounded over. Because you don't want them cutting into the, uh, into the reed. Right, not a chiseled end, but a rounded edge. Now the whole idea, once you get on this, once you get the seat here, or get up to the seat, you want to put lay the cane on here, and then you'll put a wedge in here, and a wedge here, and a wedge here, and one here. So the, what, the idea is to pull it tight. Now you'll probably need three, 12, I Four, think. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12. about 12. Like I said, 12. But before you do any of that, you've got to remember this channel's got to be really clean and you've got to put some glue in there. Otherwise, <laughs> it's not going to stick. Regular white glue? Remember? Or you can use yellow carpenter's glue. I want to take the glue, smush the glue all around in there. You want to make sure the glue is all over the channel, the bottom and the sides of the channel. Now, I'm going to take the cane, and you've got to make sure it's straight. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You've got to make sure that you've got enough on all sides, because when you start, you can't, you can't go back. You have to use a new piece of cane. And it gets kind of hairy. Hairy cane. Harry, he was with the, in a Hitchcock film, wasn't no, he? No, he had a dog act. No, that was Harry Carey. He had a dog act. Number one wedge. 
We're gonna put number one wedge. Well, I wanna put it right back here. I'll start in the back. Put one in the middle of the back. Right? You always start in the middle. See, it has wedges in there now. Now I'm gonna pull this a little bit and I'm gonna stick a wedge right in the front. Tamp gently. See, I got the cane in here, but I can't start laying the reed until the channel is clearly evident. So I have to start. The channel is clearly evident. Right. I have to go around and I gotta make a mark all the way around. And as I do that... Did you tell them you want to check for tension after you... Uh... This whole bit has tension. I hope... Now I'm going to continue all the way around until I get this line your, and your, your uh, cane starts popping up in the air like this. And then you apply more glue onto that channel and then bang the reed in with this tamper. Now you must be careful when you're tamping because if you break one of these reeds, you got to start again otherwise because it's all going to unwind. That's why you have to let it soak overnight. Like our careers. I'm going to put some glue on this. I'm going to start in the back here. This is where you bang it home. Ready? Yes! You are right, sir. You are right, sir. Ha, ha, ha. Now you can see how that is started in there. And now you're just going to take it around all the way around. to probably, well, I'll take it around to the end here. Somewhere near Jersey. Yeah. It's because you can't bend it at the corners here. So I'm going to have to stop right down there, make a cut, and then run a piece here, make a cut, and then lay a piece in straight. with the cutting. Not on the wood, I mean with your hands. You can always touch up wood. Um, one thing we found out while doing this, rather than putting... It's hot in here. Yeah, but especially if you're going to go slowly, and you should go slowly, if, especially if it's your first time, don't put the glue all the way around and then do the reed because the glue that you finish up with is going to be too dry. So just do one length, one side of the chair with the glue, tamp the reed down, and then do glue on the next, on the next side. Now, once you get this all trimmed, tamp it down, final time, and the final step is sitting. No, you gotta let this dry overnight. You don't try and sit on it right away. No? Chris okay. Now the final step is to take a rag with some water and wipe. Can I have that rag? As soon as I'm done. And you wanna wipe the whole seat. That makes it nice and wet. Right, right. And when you come back to it the next day, it'll be nice and taut. It'll tighten up. It'll it'll be dry. It'll contract. And it'll be real tight like this. Joe's out getting the strawberries because he's been reading the cane mutiny all morning, and I'm going to show you how to do a very simple cane or rattan, in this case, trick. A lot of times people have uh, porch furniture, rattan furniture. It starts to unravel at the end, especially 
where two legs come together and uh, you don't want that wobbly, you want to just repair the end of the rattan. So what I do is I clip off the ends. You always want to repair, repair it, trim it off, so you repair the inside so people don't see the repair. And you unravel it one more wind around, get a little bit of glue, put the glue on there. You don't need much. And then you wrap it underneath. Get it nice and tight. And then you get a brad. These are small brass brads, very small little nail type situations. I like to use a needle nose pliers when applying this. Get the hammer, and right where that end overlaps, or underlaps in this case, And a brass brad is good because you really, you really can't see it. Now this rattan is tight, and we can do 11 other repairs to hey, this chair. Hey, what are chair. you doing? I'm repairing the rattan to this chair, my Don't friend. repair this chair. This what? chair is mine. This chair is character. Yeah, but... This chair is... But it was character, and you were falling out of it. No, I put a pillow here. Yeah, this a nice is, pillow. This is my chair. Don't repair this chair. You can't mute me. We've been looking for a new house. But boy, everything's changed. I mean, some of the bathrooms today are bigger than a whole kitchen. And these mortgages, I mean, there, there's a 15-year mortgage, um, adjustable rates, balloons. I know I'm supposed to be excited, but I'm confused. For a free guide that can help you choose the mortgage that's right for you, call the Fannie Mae Foundation. We're showing America a new way home. How helpful are Ace Hardware dealers during helpful hardware days? Well, maybe not that helpful. But they will give you a little extra help at some extra big savings. You can't help but notice, Ace is a place with the helpful hardware folks. Well, Doc, it all started about a year or so ago. I started hearing these voices everywhere I went. Ten cents a minute, one dime, and it's good forever. Good idea. Sometimes I hear the strange counting. One minute, two minutes, one minute, two minutes. Well, I can't go anywhere without the voices. Doc, in all your years, does it remind you of anything? Doc? Doc? Actually, Kenneth, it reminds me that I want to call Sprint for that dime rate myself. Boy. Sprint Sense. Call now for ten cents a minute. Special delivery from TLC. The inside story of how babies are made. Childbirth in all its glory. It's a mother and child celebration. Friday beginning at 8 on TLC. Get ready for how-to advice from the ground up on the renovation guide. Coming up next. Then, double your knowledge, double your fun with back-to-back -back episodes of Home Time. It's all next right here on TLC. Have you ever felt like men and women are from two different planets? Then get ready to order this video. If a woman's in a bad mood, the secret to helping her get in a good mood is getting her to talk. If you can get her to talk, the more she talks about what she's feeling, the more her feelings will change. John Gray is the author of the bestseller, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. It's been published in 19 different languages and sold over 3 million copies. If you want to understand the differences between men and women, order Dr. John Gray's entertaining seminar. Available now for the first time on video. A $34.95 value. It's yours for only $9.95. When men talk, it's basically one reason to convey information to create a result. Dr. Gray's uh, tools, exercises are just immediately useful. When women need emotional support, they give us signals. They're very clear to other women, but we men misinterpret them. Our communication is just so much better. It's the answer that I was looking for. Order right now. You're looking at a French deco bar made of a very unusual wood called palm wood. Well, I think Gauguin had a lot of pieces made out of this stuff. You know, French Art Deco differs from American Deco 
because it uses more exotic wood veneers. Well, they work with more exotic cuts, we should say, uh, than, than intricate carvings. Like this Almor, for example. Did you ever hear of this wood? It's an African-Asian veneer called Burl Amboina. Yeah, he later changed his name to Ives. <laughs> no, it, but it would be hard to make a piece out of this if you had to do a repair because you can only find small pieces of it, and when you do locate it, it's very expensive. The French, they always want special, special right. with them. So you'll notice on this server, for instance, the cabinet maker carefully matched the veneers on each door, and just by coincidence, today, we're going to be showing how to do repairs on veneer. <laughs> And here we have a selection of veneers. A bunch of them. Now, remember, veneer, veneered furniture doesn't denote a cheap piece of furniture. Not necessarily, no. Beautiful wood can be beautiful on top of a piece of furniture, but not strong enough to be made into a solid piece of furniture. So what you do is you take, a, they take an underlayment, which is a plywood structure or a cheaper wood, build the piece, and then adhere the veneer with either, in the old days, they used the high glue, which is from an animal resin. Mm. And today, they use veneer glues, regular chemical veneer glues. And remember, but it doesn't veneer, mean it's cheap. veneer is nothing more or less than wood sliced very, very thin and then applied to other wood. That's right. And here we have a selection of beautiful veneers. Yeah, let's say you wanted to make a piece out of walnut. You went and you bought all the walnut. You, first, you've got to have the machinery. You've got to have a joiner. You've got to have a planer. You get the boards rough. It costs you a little cheaper. If you get the, the wood surfaced at the mill house, the Richard Mill house, then you have to, uh, you got to pay extra for that. So you've got to buy all this wood, make the cabinet, and it costs a lot. If you buy veneer, it's cheaper. But still okay. could be nice. Still could be nice. Here's walnut. Now this is called, this is a plain cut of walnut. Mm -hmm. Plain sawn. Plain sawn. Plain sawn. And this is a rift cut of walnut. A rift cut. Now, there's a difference in cutting. There's three or more basic cuts of wood. Yeah. Shall we talk about well, that? Well, let's say this is a tree. This is just a block of oak. Mm -hmm. Now, if this was a tree, one half, and you had your other half over here, and it gets struck by lightning, or you take a big chisel, or a big saw, or a, little, or a very strong knife. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and you cut it, and it falls. It is felled. Norman felled. Like that. Okay? The, the, the veneer that is cut off of this. That would be plain sawn. Like that is plain sawn. Now, from the edge over here, cut it like that. That is a rift cut. How many people this understood that? Plain, rift, rift. and peanut. No. <laughs> no, this is, what's this? this that's, is, that's a rift. That of? That's oak. 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 This is an oak rift cut. Right. And this is ash. 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 And if you curl this really tight and use a lot of glue, you can make a baseball bat no, out of it. No, that's not how they make a baseball bat. No? Baseball bat is made out of a block of of ash turned on a lathe. Get out of here. L-A-T-H-E, lathe. And Love here, that word. Here we have mahogany. Mahogany. This is Honduras mahogany. This Political is, strife, yet they still get the wood out. This is Amazon mahogany. It's Big, a lot, strong woman it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot more expensive, and, and it's thick. I mean, it's real wood. It's real estate. It's usually made for fine furniture, bar tops, and whatnot. A lovely selection. Now, don't get fooled. Here we have something that fools some people. Is that veneer? That, that, boy, that looks like veneer. No, it does not it, even. Wait, 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 wait. Tastes like veneer. Doesn't smell like <laughs> veneer. No, it's, a, it's actually a picture of wood. And uh, it's applied to a real cheap piece of wood or no wood at all, in this case, flake board. And various pictures of wood can be found on real cheap pieces of furniture or it can be painted on any kind of plastic. Now, here we have... A checkerboard. Or chessboard, as you or, prefer. Or chessboard. That's been assembled from various different kinds of woods. Well, two, three kinds, actually. But look three at, is various. Look at this. It can all tape together. Oh, I'd like to see the guy who does this all day. He sits there saying, Ugh. How many rolls of tape does he go through? What do we have here? The white is This birch. is birch. The black is birch also that's been dyed. Your inlay here is mahogany. Mahogany. And these pieces are mahogany that have been dyed black. So you can take this, you can put a veneer glue on the back, a veneer glue on your table surface or just a piece of wood. A little square table. Attach this, roll it down, finish it, and then you can put your chess pieces or your checker pieces. Take it out to the park, That's have right. a little glass of wine. Right. Here's something made out of something called burl. Burl, which is a big, infectious, knobby burl. It's a... It's a knobby it's a, burl? It's a goiter. Knobby burl, President of Lebanon, uh -huh. I believe. You're, you're full of baloney. <laughs> anyway, it's a big, it's a big goiter. They used to terrify me when I was a kid. Burl it's scared me too. Every Tuesday night, I'd hide under the bed. Him. Oh, you're that old? He's wearing a dress, Are mom. You? He's wearing a dress. We're the men from Texaco. 
This is book matched. What does that mean? That means that it's been taken from the same slice and two of them have been laid together. See? So and you got like a Rorschach. Well, you got kind of like a Pope. Looks like a Pope in there. No, I, I see it. I see wood when I no, see that. No, I see the Pope. I see the mitre right up You're, here. He's allowed to say that. 12 years of uh, Catholic school. You couldn't, you, you couldn't make a solid top or a piece of wood or any kind of furniture out of a burl because a burl has no structural integrity because like, it's a like you. stop. But you can slice it thin. So what you're doing is you're spreading the flavor of All that around. around. But if you took, you take a roast beef. Is this an right? explanation? You take a roast beef, yeah. put it on a big meat slicer, uh -huh. and you slice it. Yeah. You throw away the end. Right. All right. And then you start slicing, you get these little thin pieces. So that's, the, no. It's that's like veneer. A, it's the same no. thing. It's a no. thin slice no. of veneer. That's not a valid analogy, because well, you could have a thick slice of roast beef, which is like a prime rib. Okay, so a London broil. Yes, yes. Could There's be, your analogy. Like a London broil. You would broil. just slice a London broil thin, or a prosciutto. Prosciutto is Very. better. That's it this week for well, Furniture on the Men. We learned all about veneer. Oh. I'm Joe Lopario. If you were listening. And I'm Ed Feldman. Please be nice, be nice to your, your furniture. And your roast beef. See, now I'm going to demonstrate here. See what I'm talking about? When we were talking earlier. Now, if you cut this, right? Look at this. That's a thin slice. That's like veneer. That's what they do. I'm telling you, it's not a valid analogy. See that? Because if you make Wait. the slice thick yeah. with a roast yeah. beef. Uh huh. Now you got a big hunk there. Now you got like a prime rib here. Uh, you right. could have a roast beef. <laughs> or or, a or if, if you got a, a dark eye, you can yeah, lay it. Don't nice. touch that to your face. You can lay it See, right if on. you had a prosciutto, then it would have to be made thin. thin. Or a London broil but if you cut had a, on the bias. If you had a thin, you, you could roll it.